hello, hello, hello. I am Sam. And I am Adam. And you're listening to an episode of the PM Metal Guide Podcast. Woo! The, uh, your favorite once a month metal kind of digest, if you will. Yeah, I say, seriously. More like once a year at this point. Uh, what are we talking about today? Adam? Well, well, seeing as we're just kicking out with the start of the year, we're going to take a look at some of what we think is going to take place over the course of the uh, year of 2022. Um, both We're talking in, trends, uh, predictions, of course. Wh- what's going on in the metal world, in the music world, Whoa, what's going to happen? There's all sorts of stuff that has already happened uh, that I think is going to lead to some really drastic stuff in the next year. So it'll be interesting to see and uh, see what everyone brings to the table. Yeah, we should have should have should have written something about like using our scrying lens to see into the future or something. <laughs> I, I that would have been a good insight. Right? Anywho, yeah. let's talk about what we've been listening to because it's been a it's been a stacked January. It has actually been a pretty stacked January. I mean, there's yeah, been like, a ton I mean, of music that's come out. That's normally, normally January is just kind of catching up to whatever you didn't listen to the year before. But this year, there's been not only a shit ton of great releases, but also you know so many records from last year that i just never heard of that uh found no yeah you know, seriously lists. shout out to heavy blog they did two lists and their mm-hmm. superlative list which is sort of what we're basing our list off of this year yeah or for last year yeah uh, it's like 90 albums and so many records i've never even heard of despite being relatively deep in several scenes so it's it's been really great uh of those one that really stuck out is blindfolded and led to the woods that's a very very good and interesting album um yeah i mean I, i'm kind of surprised i know ne- like how did we never hear this <laughs> when did it come well, out well i heard i heard of i heard of this um the first single when it came out because i remember playing it on my radio show and i remember putting it in my list and i think it got dropped in like either late september or early october mm-hmm. when either so there was like lost in the I, I think it just kind of got lost in the sauce there was just either too much good stuff at the time and we just flew over it or i don't know but mm-hmm. yeah no it's a it's a great album very uh yeah kind of I mean, we got some uh, just really well written well performed diso death uh kind of like with some math core hardcore mm. influence some noise rock influence and overall just like really fist pumping diso death you know it's not like ulcerate where you're literally one with the void or yeah i don't know gore guts where you're, you it's the carry meme from Homeland. Right. And this is really like <laughs> digestible as far as Disso Death goes, with plenty of influence from related genres from some what Belgian boys? Am I getting that right? Uh, I think so. I think you're, I think that's right. I don't exactly I know. S- sorry, I, I don't mean I don't mean to be a, a europhobe. No, but... they're New Zealand. Sam, what they, they're, the heck? They're, they're from the Kiwis. They're, they're they're Kiwis. They are. Um, well, it also has this band also has two members of. Uh, Sacrament in it, who oh, really? are oh, they're just a random New Zealand death metal band. Never mind, other other Sacrament. Well, regardless, they've been around the genre, and obviously New Zealand knows their tech death. So yeah, I I just want to I just want to do like my worst fight of the Concords impression. <laughs> do that as a bonus episode. Just yeah. us talking as Br- uh, Brit like. Uh, anywho, what, 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 <laughs> oh I, I have a ton of shit to go. Yeah, no, there. me too. What, 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 um, what about you? Uh, well, a record that I think really kind of snuck up on me uh, was the Ophidian I or Ophidian One record, which um, I'm not usually into the kind of I guess more neoclassical sweepy sort of um, tech death, but something about this record really just hits the right balance between like. Just kind of like the really dumb, like uh, really power metal, speed metal, like just wankery and you know good <laughs> arc spire, I guess tech death writing. Mm-hmm. Um, and this this record hits a really good balance, and the production is good. You know all the performances are great. It's a little tongue in cheek, but I don't know. It it it's definitely one of the more entertaining and I guess uh, accessible tech death albums of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, t- I totally buy it. I mean, whenever you see like tech death records on multiple year end lists, they're, they're probably good. I just, I have like an aversion to tech death. Like, no, I know, no. Unless I, it's a band I know, I really don't want to spend time and digest it because, like, you know, it's so it's so much and yeah. it's so not good most of the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're they're they've only released two albums. This is only their second album uh, over like ten years. So, like, there's still a lot of room for them to grow, I think, but they've also had a time to kind of curate this record. And it's it's really cool. I mean, it's kind of symphonic, 
kind of like um I don't know, like the overt symphonics of a record like Palimpsest, or even like the new, uh, the first fragment record that everyone was going crazy about this year. It's it's that sort yeah. of similar vibe. Yeah, I'm sure it's good. I, I, I'm just I'm probably never listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. People once, people once. All right, uh, I'll add it. Um, let's see. Also from 2021, Abstract Void, which is like yeah. synthwave, atmospheric black metal, black gaze. With a you know really cheeky program drums and plenty of vaporwave influence <laughs> and I don't know this thing's great. <laughs> yeah, it's listen- really really well, atmospheric. It's really a vibey music and it leverages the textures of atmospheric black metal and more modern takes on the genre to really make a powerful artistic statement. Yeah, no, I've listened to this record a couple of times and well, I'll never I'll never forget uh, the the beautiful records that Mazartham give us. They just don't really have it anymore. And yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, uh, it's good to see a group like Abstract Void coming up and kind of taking that um, cosmic electronic black metal in a direction mm-hmm. that uh, that really works. Also from the heavy blog list, they really did. I cannot uh, give those guys enough. No, for yeah, just putting the best content out uh, at the end of the year. Yeah. No. Uh, what else you got from uh, from from years past? So. I see this on both of our lists, and I'm. I just. I still actually am. I. I, I want to have a discussion about it. But the LLN. The LLNN record, Unmaker, still hasn't hit for me. And I don't really? know. I don't know what it is, but. Um, I've listened to it a good number of times. Let's do it when it came out. Uh, but I just. I. Uh, no. I, I. I don't know. It just doesn't hit for me. That's surprising. I mean, you like Conjure, right? I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. I don't. I, I didn't really know. Maybe I just need to spend more time with it. But like, I, I, you know, I gave it quite a few spins, and it just, it just never, uh, yeah, never hit. Maybe I just need I to listen to it at full volume. Maybe I think I think I think you gotta kind of understand that this record is like pulling a lot from new metal and deathcore, yeah, and other things, and sort of accept that. But I mean, I I think it's good. I think it's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> like it's heavy as balls. Performances yeah, yeah. are fucking visceral, uh, and it makes you want to like windmill kick your lamp or something no, like, that's true you know, that's true I th- i'll throw it on when i'm working out and then like oh, this is the best shit ever yeah. and it's it's also entertaining sludge metal which is hard to do that is hard it's hard to come by uh yeah it does keep you on your toes but yeah no um that record that record's pretty darn good so i'll give it that yeah i mean i'm sure that band's awesome live oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> Um, speaking of not entertaining sludge metal, dude, I don't like the ocean. I'm sorry. I just no. don't. No. I, no. I was like, you know what? I, it's January. It's time to, to look back, enjoy some classics that I know I would like, right? Listen to Plagial like six times, dude. Record no, sucks. Can't. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Record just sucks ass. Like, compositions <laughs> are like eight, ten minutes like, long. Like, the melodies kind of go nowhere. Yeah. The songs don't really build. It's just, mm-hmm. oh, cool, melodic, proggy idea sludge into yeah. cool melodic proggy idea sludge like uh, look i know i don't want to be like <laughs> once again europhobic but whenever i hear like the very thick german accent for my prog metal it takes me out just a little bit <laughs> and especially and i don't know yeah. like this thing is just too long i li- like every time i listen to it i'm like is this the last song mm. is this the last song is this the last song no it just goes and it does it i remember goes, like, i remember listening to it originally when it came out the f- you know, part one, and it's, it was just, it was hard oh, to get through. you're talking through. about Fanrisaic. I'm talking about Pala- uh, Pelagial. Oh, oh, Pelagial, Pelagial. Well, either way, when I, you, I don't think that music has changed, because I've also listened to, Pala- <laughs> I've, I've listened to, you know, Pelagic uh, a couple times, but yeah, no, like, yeah, it's, like, uh, and the thing is, I should love this, like, it's every pl- prog cliche in, like, a sludge metal fashion, with, like, I don't know fairly good production right. what more could you want and i don't know it's not not for me it does just disappoint a bit it's just boring man it's just boring yeah. like it's so hard to make engaging sludge metal that like unless you're inter arma <laughs> or like merging sludge with yeah. any other genre i don't know no, it's, it's not it, for me it is difficult it is yeah i just just had to get the hot take take machine out good good um all right yeah i have a couple more Dude, yeah, no, I have, I have, I have plenty. More. I've been listening to a lot of music right, this month. Um, have you? Did you listen to the the brand new Derweg Einer Freiheit record that came out this year, Sam? <laughs> I've <laughs> I've not listened to Derweg Einer Freiheit. Well, unfortunately, you know what? You definitely should because it's some darn quality music. They put out that album in 2017, uh, Finisterre, that everyone went crazy for. 
like you'll know the album cover when you see it um but it's good i mean it's just it's really good uh kind of like dissonant german black metal um that i don't know keeps the ears really engaged and uh overall just you know keeps you listening really nice stuff um and it's kind of simple and they do a lot of really interesting production techniques so yeah I'm, I'm sure i'm sure it's good i mean there's so much quality like boundary pushing black metal from every yeah. part of the world no yeah uh, i wouldn't be surprised if like a uh, black market mentioned mentioned this after listening to about 30 seconds this very much seems like something that yeah no I, well no it, i mean i think they're a, a relatively well-known band um at least within some scene uh, oh, re- relatively unknown is a strong <laughs> a strong term or relatively known is a strong yeah term. relatively known yeah no but yeah um yeah it's it's pretty darn awesome so definitely uh give nocturne the name of that record a listen that's fair Be- before we talk about the one record which i know we'll have a decent amount to say i'll, I'll continue going back on the things i've revisited mm-hmm. uh let's see so i've been I'm learning drums pretty hard the past like month or so just you know grinding about an hour hour and a half a day and Dude, Abe Cunningham is such an amazing drummer. Yeah, he, yeah, he is. He really is. Like, I, you know, I've been so I've been listening to a lot of the Deftones catalog. You know, just kind of focused on the rhythm section because you know I can play a lot of the songs on guitar. Um, and wow, he's just he really serves the song. He's a really like groovy drummer. He knows mm-hmm. when to fill. He knows when to pull back. And he knows how to like just I don't know make really good beats for these great compositions. And I don't know, awesome drummer. No, yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I've <laughs> I've learned quite a bit of the Deftone stuff myself on drums, and it's it's all super fun. But a lot of it's really complex, and a lot of even like on some of the lighter stuff uh, from like White Pony and yeah, like, Beyond. Yeah, like no, like Digital Bat's insane. <laughs> yeah, no, like those songs are really really tricky and. Uh, yeah, no, you you don't even really notice it when you're hearing the actual song because you know, I guess you don't notice that thing in like the major hook songs. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no, he's like really really tasteful drummer. And another thing I didn't realize until now, which is kind of funny, is that like Chino doesn't sing on beat like ever. <laughs> like no, I was listening yeah. to White Pony the other day. Yeah, I know main mainstream or whatever. <laughs> and I'm just like every song I'm like counting like wait. He's he's entering, uh, he, what? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and like everything, and I mean that's part of his style and it works. It's just right. I think it's kind of funny that I've been listening to Deftones for like seven years now, mm-hmm. and I just noticed that. Yeah, so oh. yeah, funny stuff. Yeah, yeah, Deftones, great, uh, great I don't band, know, very incredible discography, mm-hmm. great hits. Of course, can't can't say enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. I guess we'll jump right back in. Um. Did you list? Have you listened to the Usta Lost album, Sam? Before the Glinting Spell Invest, the side project of Will Skarstad from Yellow Eyes. I have not. I'm sure it's good. It's very good. Uh, it dropped in December, so it makes sense that you know people may have missed it. Um, I've seen a little bit of coverage on it, though. I think the Heavy Blog men- uh, list did mention it um, at some point, or someone mentioned it. Uh, but great album. I mean, it's pretty much. I, I, if you like Yellow Eyes, you're going to love this record. It's just sort of more of that same dissonant kind of lo-fi um, raw sound. But there's a bit more um, melody intertwined in this one uh, than there is in Yellow Eyes stuff. So definitely cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, Yellow Eyes are probably like my favorite black metal I'm sure <laughs> yeah. I enjoy that. Yeah, no, great. Uh, I've been listening to way too much Dungeon Synth. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Adam made the decision to make a Dungeon Synth album in the near future, and got to prepare. And goddamn, the genre just sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, all the Dungeon know. Synth that's really good is just like ambient with like a little bit of slightly different instrumentation. Yeah. Like depressive silence is quite good, and you know all the the more droney aspect of it. But like I listen to like Malfet or whatever, or I'll, like the more. <laughs> medieval yeah. orchestration and it's just it's the dumbest shit ever it's like, ve- it's very dumb it, but it ha- it does have a very particular niche i guess that it hits cuz yeah, there's like, so much of it know. because there is so much of that kind of music it's all it's cuz it's so low effort like yeah. <laughs> you literally like get a vst plugin for like <laughs> flutes or whatever and make a flute loop that's like eight bars and then just use that for 8 minutes and then you just change the chords underneath and that's it that's like every yep. dungeon song ever yep like I went on RYM, listened to the top ten most best rated Dungeon Synth albums of all time, and like, goddamn, that was half <laughs> of them, at least. It's just so it's not good. I don't know. I don't understand why black metal dudes and metalheads in general like this subgenre so much. Yeah. 
No, no. I I, I, mean, I listen to the music when, you know, when in the mindset of a role-playing game or when using a role-playing game of some kind. And I think that is part of, you know, its uh, its purpose. I don't know. Maybe it is just a context thing, but it, it is difficult music to listen to when you're not, you know, really, you know, listening to it for that. Mm-hmm. Or, well, like, I'd rather just listen to, like, Summoning for that. Right. <laughs> sure. Summoning has good songs in addition to lame as shit orchestral <laughs> segments. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's part of the charm, but... Yeah. <sighs> yeah, too much Dungeon Synth. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna... I'll mention this briefly, and then we can talk about the elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, peeped a lot of uh, more of Cardi catalog recently. Great stuff. Sure holds thing, up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 holds up. <laughs> Hold the heck up, I'd say as so. well as listening to a bunch of Meshuggah, because, because they announced a new record. Yeah. And spoiler alert, Coloss is still the best Meshuggah record. <laughs> you heard it, folks. Yep. All the other, I don't know, you can make arguments against all of them, but they're all, mm-hmm. chances, like, if you listen to any Meshuggah album, it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> They've, the lads have been doing the exact same record for about 30 <laughs> years, and you know what, that's okay, because they do it quite well. It works for them. Um, it yeah. It does work for them, yeah. and all the records have like undeniable bangers mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited for that new Meshuggah. Yeah, me too. Um, all right, yeah. well, yeah. What's your elephant in the room, Sam? <laughs> so this this little known band called Will the Run dropped a record this month. Wow, that's crazy. I I never. Is it good? Uh, it's not just good; it's incredible. It's wow. really amazing. Wow, that's 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 just swell. That's so strange for a January release. That's not typical, Sam. That doesn't make any sense. Why? Why would that? Yeah, ever... it's it's almost like this was probably supposed to release in like. I'm gonna I'm gonna be generous <laughs> and say like summer of 2021, yeah. and then shortages were like the way Century Media was like, no, 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 no. come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they <laughs> pushed it to January. And even then, my vinyl I ordered is not coming till April. Oof, that's rough. Um, but you know what's not rough is anything about uh, Epigon, or Epigony. Ep- Epigon? Epig- Epigony? Epigony? Epigon? Epigon? I think it's Epigony. Epigony? Yeah, I don't know. Well, because it's Antigone, not Antigon. Right, right, right. So yeah, Epigony. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. This album's just, like, uh, it's just Wilderun, man. Like, I guess they can't miss. No, seriously. And, I mean, I think if you have any criticism of this record, it's that it's a little Wilderun-y. Mm-hmm. But that's, like, you know, the, it's that's... it's like when you listen to a new Opeth record and you hear, like, the very specific way that Acker felt, like, stylizes, like, a, <laughs> a, a riff or a harmony. And you're right. like, oh! Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, this is this is very much uh, Wilderun. You know, if you like their previous two records, you like this. This record's incredible. Like, it flows beautifully. All the songs are great. Performances are great. It sounds incredible, mixed by Jens Borgen. Yes. If, so, led, you know, legend there. And, I don't know, this thing's just so good. Super, super compelling blend of uh, progressive death metal with plenty of folk um, and orchestral instrumentation, um, and as well as melodic death metal influence. That, And when I say melodic death metal, I don't mean, like... yeah. No, 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 shitty no. type. <laughs> yeah, no, you're talking. Yeah, no, good. Actually, death metal that has melody intertwined within it. Yeah, and I mean, you can tell like Evan and the lads have been chewing on this stuff for a while, and they're like, he's just an amazing songwriter. Um, no, really knows how to craft like a full album experience. All I've I've gone back. I went back and listened to Sleep at the Edge of the Earth a few times mm-hmm. too, to get some context. And just across those three albums. And you know the middle being failed imagination. Yeah, there's just no misses. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the music just flows kind of perfectly throughout each one of them. I mean, there really is no uh, part at any point where you're really questioning what's going on or having to like try and piece it together. No, it's all, it's mm-hmm. all there. It's all perfectly laid out. It's yeah, it's it, it's beautiful yeah. too. It's no, just, totally. And like, like yeah. you 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 always ask yourself why like those Opeth records are so good, and it's because it's because that contrast and. Uh, Will the Run does that contrast incredibly. They really know when to bring it. They know when to simmer down. They know when to put their little interludes in, and they're like fifteen, twenty minute long songs. <laughs> yeah, right. And I don't know this this thing. Like this is up there. Like Real Imagination was what was that number six on our or seven on our list? Uh, yeah, something like that. I think sounds about Epigon right. Epigon will be in the top ten. Like yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this thing's. 
I, I haven't heard a, a bad thing about it. I mean, if you don't like long form progressive metal, you're not gonna like this. But if you like progressive metal, like at all, this thing's a must listen. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, like, who who knew they'd do a, a pretty cool cover of? No, <laughs> seriously. Songs? Oh yeah, like that. I was not expecting that, but honestly, yeah, it's a great it's a great finish to the album. A bonus track that's not cringe on a Prague album. What is this? Hey, I mean, Seahorse was there for a little bit. Almost. 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 I don't know why they didn't do a Bloom song for <laughs> uh, Rise Radiant, but <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never know. Remember when we were, remember when they were gonna like play America and Stop. then COVID happened like two Rip. years. <laughs> Come back, we'll pay. We'll pay. And they they'll start the set with a uh, Bloom and Tamara Gold, and you're like, wake up. <laughs> And then, oh, and then you get, and then you hop on stage during the. I am a wealthy man. I. Oh, am. <laughs> my God. Bro. One day. One day. One day. Oh, actually, we have a. I mean, well, I'm sure we'll talk about this in the news segment. There's yep. plenty of good tour announcements. Assuming Omicron doesn't kill everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Speaking of Omicron killing everyone, ready to move on to our, our our main feast. Well, hold on, hold on. Is that all we've been listening to, Sam? Is I mean, I, I could new? go for I could go for a bit more. Those are the notable ones. Right. I think the I think I mean I can give a few sentences. Like the new Earl Sweatshirt record kind of sucks. Very yeah, disappointing. I agree. It sucks. Um, well, what about the new Mismore album, Sam? Oh gosh, uh, ambient songs too long winded. I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's Which an EP. It's an EP. I mean, it's, it's it's an EP. You know, like I kind of wish that there was more. I was kind of expecting mm-hmm. more. I think a lot of people were expecting more. That's why it has like a 2.85 on RYM right now. But Really? Yeah, it has a pretty low score. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, Wits End itself is great. I, you know, I always have a thorough enjoyment going through it. But, um, yeah, no. I think the uh, little... Uh, Paradoy is a little um, long-winded. Yeah, and I mean, not to say it's bad. It's a pretty, like, astute piece of kind of dark ambient but no i mean it's not like he uh, he did it with dialecta dialectia yeah, Dial- yeah. Dial- it's just you know the music's a little long-winded and doesn't yeah. make for a full like like what sounds no. great you know classic mismore uh yeah. it's a little <laughs> and that's yeah. not to say i don't want to see mismore like grow and expand it's just i don't know if you hadn't like, if, if there was more maybe i'd be okay with the 15 minute mm-hmm. prior to at the end yeah i, I, I agree know. Oh. Or like I don't know, like you gotta you gotta pull on some of that like melodic heft that makes the serpent eats its tail the best song ever, right? Yeah, yeah. Like not you know, to say that repetition. we don't trust ALN to come back with a, another smash. I'm sure. I'm sure. Another banger. I'm sure it will come in. A, yeah, no, I'm I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure the next full length will be awesome. Yeah. I mean, um, it's only been oh I was gonna say it's only been a few two years <laughs> since uh, cared, but well uh, yeah, right. I feel old. No, seriously. Um, and then, all right, I just have to, I have to mention the We Edge Dude record. Um, got it. <laughs> okay, so you know Church of Raw, Oathbreaker, Amon Ra, the classic. Yeah, well, no, guess the, 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 the yeah, last dumb Netherlands thing, uh, Belgium, dumb Belgium thing. But We Edge Dude is another one of those bands in there. It has the um, the Oathbreaker, one of the Oathbreaker guitarists, and um, the and the ex Amon Ra vocalist. Um, and it's black metal and it's ridi- actually kind of ridiculously good. It's really okay, I'll actually, I'll add that shit right now. It, How do you spell it? It's we, we edge dude. W I E G E D O O D. Oh, I found it. Yeah. Wow. No, it, no it's, it's, it, it's, it's great. It's like, it's kind of, um, I don't call it's not anywhere similar to like the Spectral Wound album that came out last year, but it's just as maximalist. But it's more modernly pretty. It's a modern Brock metal album. It's not old head worship or anything like that. Um, All right, re- respect them. I'm sure it's good. They also have some folk elements in there here and there, and some spoken word, but you'll, some you'll, dark, you'll get, some you'll dark get Americana. You'll, 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 you'll get into <laughs> oh, it. Oh no! But yeah, no. Um, great record. Like insane. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that one out if you haven't. Okay, no, I definitely will. Um, and let me, yeah, I think I think that's it for the most part. Okay, yeah, I mean, I could, I could, I'm not going to mention the, a few of the other records I'm listening to, but there's been a lot of good music. There has been. All right. Well, I guess I guess we we move. So yeah, 2022, the year, <sighs> God. The, the year of the fish. 
Do you I, have I, the fish? I, have no, I don't know what the zodiac is. I don't know what the zodiac is. I see right there. Actually. Not that not that it really matters, but no. what what uh, you know? We've been we've been in the game for a while. We've been we've been kind of deep in, in yeah. metal for at least like five six years at this point. Yeah. What you know? We we've seen trends rise and fall. We've seen empires build and get destroyed <laughs> just as quickly. That's true, actually. No. <laughs> 2021 saw the like the atmospheric oh rise of a band like Spirit Box, band like Turnstile. That's true. You know, we saw the return of new metal yeah. to the forefront in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. We saw heavy music clawing its way ever closer to mainstream. So, what 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 what's your first big prediction? What what do you think is going to happen in All 2022? Right. My first big prediction for 2022, I think. I think there has to be another um, shoegaze metalcore band to blow up. Whether that's Loathe exploding into, like, Code Orange territory or beyond. Or someone like Rolo Tomasi stepping in and filling that mm -hmm. void in, as, like, the modern metalcore shoegaze heavy hitter. I mean, the new Cloakroom album came out this today. Cloakroom? Yeah, Cloak Room are sort of like... I'm not even... I'm it's not like familiar. similar to nothing, a little bit more like hardcore influence. Okay. They're part of like the heavy shoegaze movement. Okay. And that record's been getting absurdly good reviews already. Yeah, I mean, it's um, the and, first single's got 100,000 plays on Spotify. Yeah. So, and, all right. And then you have you have bands like... Uh, Gosh, what's a who's the who's the one that uh they're like a heavy shoegaze band. They have one album like 2018. It's like they had that that amazing song. They're touring with uh Def Heaven in a few months. Oh God, I don't even know. A few of our friends used to go bananas for him. Wait, I don't know. It's not like I want. It's not like fawn fawn limbs. But... Oh 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 um, holy fawn. Holy yeah, font. yeah, holy, holy font. font. Yes, holy yeah, font. Yeah, holy font. You know, they've made okay, pretty significant yeah. waves. You got bands like yeah, yeah, okay. Have a Nice Life who are absurdly popular oh, playing course. like heavy shoegaze. Um, I told you, know, I, I think that's a fair prediction. I think, you know, we've already, we've seen elements of it in plenty of popular artists. Like, Def Heaven blew the heck up. Well, yeah, Def, they already did. Def Heaven blew the heck up. I mean, uh, even like Deftones, uh, not last year, but, you know, was it last year? God, did Ohms come? No, year before. Two like, years ago. Yeah, yeah. Ohms came out two years ago. But, like, I mean, obviously they're still riding high on that. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, I don't know. I think I think that someone kind of has to step up. I don't know. I just feel it's, no, it's I, time. I think, I think that's totally fair. Because, I mean, it seems like everyone who I talk to now, regardless of, like, what kind of music they listen to, wants, wants to start a heavy shoegaze band. <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, I mean we were in a heavy shoegaze band for a bit. Like, Yeah, it's not, it's not really that hard to accomplish. Um, but yeah, yeah no. I mean, I th we're we're sort of in that like magic. Uh, well, I'll mention this again in a little bit, but like you know, trends come and go about every twenty twenty five years. Twenty years ago has when heavy heavy shoe gaze was like, like yeah, twenty five years ago. Heavy shoe gaze was huge. A lot of kids nowadays, a lot of zoomers, a lot of younger millennials are listening to the shoe gaze shit, listening to bands like Death Heaven, bands like Alcest, bands like Mole, mm -hmm. and being like, oh, what if we apply this like a hardcore framework? Yeah. And I mean, you could. I mean, shoegaze is a pretty loose genre tag. You could even say something like ultra pop by the arm to shoegaze. Sure. I mean, you could even go so far as to kind of say that, like that, the Turnstile record can fall sort of into that category. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, it's just a really popular aesthetic right now. And I mean, I love shoegaze. I think Suvlaki is one of my favorite albums of all time. I absolutely adore the new Death Heaven record. I absolutely adore all the modern heavy shoegaze stuff. So, and uh, yeah, I guess what Loth is two years ago now, right? No, they're they're coming in a new album this year. Already, oh, already they're dropping announced. a new record this yeah, year. New, new album I, I, this I year. just know, I let it in and it took everything. Was 2019? Yeah, no, they're coming out with a new full record this year. They put out a a single, I think, already. Didn't their uh, founding guitarist leave? I think so. Yeah. So yeah, Woo! and I think Woo! I think they just oh, the a teenage wrist did a remix of um two way mirror. It, te, no, of uh, is it really you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a uh, Loth one of those bands where yeah. like, I mean, I actually, I the more you know, it, it's not. Uh, I let it in, took everything. It's definitely a grower. Album blew the heck up for a good reason. Yeah, but yeah, but no, I am uh, very wary of the wary of their future. No, I don't. I they can either they can either really really blow up or like just 
kind of, I don't know. If they keep doing the same thing that they've been doing, they, they Well, I mean, I'm just like, dude, the, the, the dude that wrote all of their songs is gone. Oh, it's gone. And, yeah. And I'm sure... Like that's like if Stephen Carpenter left Eptones. Well, that's true. I mean, the the new singles, um, there it's 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 uh it's heavy. It's electro. It's more electronic, and I think if I'm remembering correctly, please don't shoot me in the head. Loathe band. Um, I think there might be rapping on it, or some form of hip hop influenced vocal styling. I mean, I don't necessarily hate that. I I don't think I, no. I'm. I think it's a I good single. You know, I, yeah, I'm. I don't listen to singles, but when the album comes out, I'll be there. Yeah, to judge it. But yeah, so prediction one, I think that's fairly fair. That's fair. It's yeah. like you know, a, a new heavy shoegaze band is gonna blow the hell up. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. Right. I'll go with a. I'll go with a fairly obvious one as well. Then, and that I think the new metal revival is gonna continue. And I think, honestly, I think like a heavily new metal influence track is gonna chart in like the top fifty. Yeah, I mean, I believe that. I mean, we're already close, man. Like no, well, like look at a song like um, "You Girls Ruin My Life," right? Yeah, or "You Girls Are Ruining My Life" by Corpse Husband. You know, horrible song, but that song <laughs> takes so much from like new metal, mm -hmm. and that song was literally like number sixty or something last year because of TikTok. Yeah, and like uh, like the younger generation, the Zoomer generation, and you know, younger millennials are so like just ready for this much more aggressive mm -hmm. aesthetic that you can kind of blend with anything, whether, you know, that's Denzel Curry with considerable new well influence across his like mainstream trap records. New yeah. Denzel singles. Awesome. By the way, whether that's, you know, suicide boys or ghost main or any of the, the, uh, trap metal guys. Uh, but you're even like a lot of, uh, pop punk artists are kind of oh, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't like this band at all, but movements, for example, mm -hmm. dropped a few singles uh, this year, or last year, which are just like ripping straight from the Family Values era corn yeah. stuff. Um, or even in Deathcore, like Slaughter to Prevail are straight up like new Deathcore now. Same yeah. thing with Darko. Same thing with a uh, certain spirit, like Holy Roller from Spirit Box. Same thing with groups like Conjure, LLNN. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Zoomers. 20 years toward, were born right at the years, time yeah. where like new metal wasn't ruined for them it wasn't weathered by the world you know so they hear, heard all these songs growing up and they're they're putting them into their own music mm -hmm. in a way that's like really like not ironic it's just a, a wholesale appreciation no i mean I, the more the more and more trap metal and stuff that i listen to through peers and whatnot i mean it just it's all it's all blending toward that really like punky i don't give a shit attitude like really just kind of like they don't even care if they're using shit beats they're just going hard as fuck mm -hmm. like the i don't know the new metal aesthetic is uh, it, it certainly hasn't died but it, it is coming back in full swing yeah having a I band mean, like limp biscuit kind of mm -hmm. even there to really help provide a helping yeah. hand along or like you know gonna, i think yeah. slipknot, slipknot and corn are dropping new albums this right. year um and not 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 that i don't think i don't think we should necessarily look to the old guard in this case, but I wouldn't be surprised if some like MGK, like young blood dropped like a really successful album. And one of the lead singles were to chart in like mm -hmm. the top, like top 40, top sure, 20, yeah. which has like screaming on it. And like new metal. Well, hell, new I metal mean, metal. Corey Taylor was going to be on a machine gun Kelly track. It's our, you know, yeah. it's already, it's already, you yeah, know. no, I mean like we're there. All it takes is like, I don't know. We're, we're wait for Travis Barker to collab with a, I don't know who's some like. Did he already? Dino he already <laughs> collab with Suicide Boys. I mean, you're too late. Oh no, I was I was <laughs> trying to think of like some washed up new metal dude. Oh okay, all right, fair enough. Like and, uh, Travis Barker and Fieldy from Corn. There you go. And yeah, I don't know. New metal is definitely back. I think it's going to continue to be back to like be a thing, and I would not be surprised if it, like a legitimate new metal song charted. Yeah, I honestly, I believe it. I, totally I mean, that's like a, that's a that's kind of an obvious prediction. It's kind of a slam dunk. Yeah. Right, I'll say it. That's all right. I said it. That's all right. That's all right. Um. Okay. All right. I have another prediction. I guess. Shoot. Um. I think that there's going to be a really big, clear divide between, um, the heavy just honestly the, the rock music community and it's already it's already starting but i think that there there's going to be a, a really big drastic cultural shift between rock music that's already you know definitely happening but 
as the country becomes much more politicized, so does uh, our, our music landscape. And I'm sure we can, you know, expound on this a little bit more in our news uh, segment. But um, <laughs> um, there, there, there's just there's lots of people who are taking sides um, in the music and rock specifically community um, that are I don't know I, I feel like there's something is going to come to a head at some point there's gonna there's gonna be one point that all of it is gonna come to whether that's streaming services or I don't know an award show or something stupid like that but like I don't know some I feel like something is in the midst of beginning in terms of like really splitting I guess the the rock community the metal community. I- no, I, I feel that. I, I, I definitely see where you're coming from. I mean, and something that would come to mind or, like, something I could totally see happening would be, like, a band, like, I don't know, Disturbed headlining, like, a big rock festival. Right. And then, like, a bunch of, like, more political or more uh, left-leaning bands being like, fuck this, I'm not playing that. Um, yeah. And sort of getting a very, like, sheer divide between sort of the butt-rocky, more, like, conservative groups and everyone else. Because yeah. right now, you know, you can see a tour with, like, Ghost and Volbeat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, and I don't, I don't, I, I would not see that happening in like, you know, a few months when like a Vol- the Volbeat vocalist starts talking about how like, I, I don't know, any <laughs> number of, of really dumb yeah. like boomer talking points. No, it's, um, I don't know, like, there's just, there's so much we could talk about and so much we have talked about already. But, um, yeah, I think oh, something well. like a, a festival being played or, like, someone, you know, some some band making a statement or something that's uh, about someone in the band or, or something like that. There's going to be I mean, some... I see it. I, I honestly yeah. see it as more like a regional and audience divide because, like, if you look at, like, it's kind of a running joke in, like, uh, you know, music criticism where it's like, oh, what was the best-selling metal album of the year? Some random hard rock band you've never heard of. Yeah. Like, a band, like, a band like Wolfgang EVH, right? Yeah. Like, you know... I've literally never heard one of his songs in my life. You know, I literally work in the music industry yeah. and like am anally involved in hard rock, like heavy music. And I've never heard that guy in my life. Like yeah. something like that or like Seether or any of these atrocious butt rock bands. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you look at the primary audience for that sort of thing, it is Gen X. It is like people that are Gen Xers and older usually from the midwest and usually conservative like who the hell is listening to bad wolves how the hell does bad wolves sell more copies in its first week than uh, bt bam you right. know like how does that happen right it's because the you know these bands have a have a very strong base with mm-hmm. certain demographics and i see it more as a demographic split than anything else because uh, you know there are s- i feel like mm-hmm. every goddamn younger band we listen to is like in some way directly politically left and and that's i would say so i i mean i hope so you know i think it's i think that part of the problem is i i don't know i i haven't been on music twitter too too often but when i am on music twitter i see i don't see anything problematic but there are certain sources that just put things in a certain light that like i really feel are detrimental to the community and overall just kind of like um, I feel like we're better than this, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I feel like either something something is going to happen with a band or, like, who knows, maybe a media company or a record label is going to have a big thing. But I don't know. I feel like something is going to have to come to a head uh, at some point soon. I, I think... I think... I think in order for something to come to head, it'd have to be like pretty like outright atrocious. Well, I, you know, I would agree. All, all these all these large media companies are like inherently liberal, just because that's popular, right? Yeah. Um, and it have to, in order to drop like an openly like you know idiot conservative band, they'd have to do something absurd. No, I, <laughs> like, I, I say yeah. something crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't but, know. We'll, I mean, have, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait. We've see. seen like three or four notable hard rock musicians at the Capitol riots last year. Right. I mean, fuck. Like, I, I, Mr. John Schaefer, you know, got got what was coming to him. Our boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, I see where you're coming from. I I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. How, I, like I said, I think it more manifests as like a band's dropping off a tour or like dropping sure. off a festival because another like large artist that said something like atrocious 
was also there. But then yep. again, money's money's a pretty powerful money, incentive. Money money is a very powerful incentive. Like look at Coachella. Kanye is headlining Coachella. The man has said you know no shortage of atrocious things the past mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. ten years, and it's not like anyone's doing anything about that. No. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Why, why we'll would see. you? We'll see. I don't know. No, no that's that's. Uh, I I think that's fair. I mean. <laughs> you know, I think I think we we both have a uh, certain positions and and why the country is more divided now. Yeah, and it's definitely not any. It's definitely not the left's fault. <laughs> I, w- I would I wouldn't say so. Personally, <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> or I mean, dude, wait, yeah, yeah, this isn't. Oh we've already God. seen a lot of this too with like bands who are like anti-vaccine mandate. Right. Too. Like I'm not touring. If there's a vaccine mandate. Okay, then. Sorry, don't tour. <laughs> so, yeah, shut, yeah, shut the fuck up. I'm like, I don't know. I, I, this is, you know, this is. I listen to so much discourse on this sort of thing, so this has been done to death. But mm-hmm. it's just disappointing. Yep. Uh, Sam, what about you? Do you have any uh, any other predictions, Sam? Yeah, I, I, I got I got plenty. Oh. I think something you know that we've sort of seen in the past few years that's going to continue, maybe even come to a head, Whoa. is sort of just the dissolution of genre ba- boundaries for any and all heavy music. And yeah. when I say heavy music, I don't just mean like, oh, you know, metal, hardcore, because there's always been, they've been sort of cl- much closer in the past 20 years or so. I mean like, you know, 100 Gex playing a bill with mm. Knocked Loose, or like, yeah. you know, S- Suicide Boys touring with Carnifex. Right. I don't know. Like, I mean like, that that stuff seems reasonable to me. I mean, there's already been some strange examples that we've seen in the past um, mm-hmm. of some crazy concerts, but like, yeah, no, I, that that barrier is really being broken down. No, totally. Like at this point, it does not matter whatsoever what style of heavy music you play. Like, you know, I, I saw Primitive Man in Boston a couple, you know, I guess a month ago, and there was like. Uh, Weir- weirdo indie band, noise band, death metal band, and prim- prim- and uh, <laughs> death sludge band. So it's like, okay. Or like you go to a hardcore show and one of the bands playing is just straight up doing like entombed core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? right? Like it, it, this doesn't matter anymore. And I nope. t- can totally see like a hyper pop artist like who with like heavy, you know, heavy elements playing a bill with cannibal corpse or something dude i mean hell phil phil fuck uh phil fucking everum tours or is touring the west coast with a, with a black it with a two-woman black metal band yeah. like like that's that's happening like i don't know man like you're right it, there there it's just coming to a point where it really doesn't matter like yeah and like dude the average music listener you've like nowadays is so like accustomed to more like abrasive sonic aesthetics like, think about how many people got really into You Won't Get What You Want because of Fantano. Dude, or, so many. Um, or Death Grips, or even, like, more recently, like, Clipping, right? Like, these sure. Are, like, I was, I think I think I told you this, but I was I was working uh, in the kitchen at the restaurant I work at, and this, like, this girl who's not super invested in music is just ha- has her, like, like songs on shuffle. And the playlist literally goes from, like, Nickelback and Stained to <laughs> Dog Leg and Clipping. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> no, there's that's a female-led noise rock band from Cali. I forget their name, but like all this absurdly like abrasive yeah. music out of nowhere in between like butt rock songs, and mm-hmm. like that's that's the average music listener nowadays. Like people do not care if something's no. abrasive. No, not at all. I mean, most of the people that I hang out with, or you know, I'm in circles with that you know talk about music. It's generally like just kind of a mishmash of heavy stuff, you know. It it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, I'm a metalhead, or oh, I'm a, a trap metalhead, or oh, I'm an ambient kid. People just fucking listen. They'll listen to whatever, man. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, you sort of hit upon it with heavy shoegaze, sort of hit upon it with new, with like the new yeah. metal. But like, dude, genre barriers don't matter. And I told, I can totally see like, you know big collaborations or big tours between 100 gex and other people dude we're gonna put rate your music out of a job sam dude i know <laughs> i mean gen- genres matter less and less every year they really like, do if you if you know if you look at why they're they're even implemented it's for radio formats yep and radio formats haven't mattered in about 25 years <laughs> so there you go i say as someone who you know is the general manager of a radio station <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I, I look forward to uh to our you know our overlords being able to make, letting us listen to whatever. Yeah, yeah, and see whatever. Yeah. 
All right. What 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 else you got, Adam? All right. Well, I have a very small prediction, and it's also kind of a news, just, just quick quick little news thing. Um, uh, new Kralis album dropped today, and uh, I bet it's sick. Dude, I saw that. I was like, what? Kralis dropped another. <laughs> yeah, Man, right. I, I am so intimidated because I've really only listened to Yig Her a shit ton. Well, and good. I, I mean, I, AMG I dropped their like Kralis the ranking list. a few days ago, and I was like, man, I should just listen to every Kralis record because I know they're all great. It's just <laughs> it's so much, <laughs> it's and so it's not much. like it's easy music. No, it's not. It's it's tough. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've listened to a bit of the discography. I've listened to Demonic Wealth quite a few times. Um, Eager, I own Eager. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Is that how you pronounce it? Eager. I don't know, dude. That's how Eager. I her. Eager. No. But yeah, I bet it's gonna be great. But my actual prediction is um, this new Ghost album is gonna suck. Like, dude, utter... it's not even funny how bad these singles are. <laughs> like, I really thought Hunter's Moon was like a one-off. Like, oh, you know, whatever. And then I heard it was gonna be, oh. and I heard the new single, "No Call Me Little Sunshine." I dude. think, yeah, Dog "Call Me Little shit. Sunshine," dude. No, Dog it's... Dog shit. <laughs> I don't. No, I do know what happened. There, he, it's out. They're out of ideas. The ghouls are I, gone. There's, there's I no know, more. I know ghoul. what happened. Money. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, Forge realized he could cater to literally oh everybody, including <laughs> like, you know, a a strictly pop audience, and was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's just do that. <laughs> and yeah, no, I agree. Like he, he really sounds like he's out of ideas. It's like Martin and all the other ghouls were there to balance him. You know, prequel we were kind of hoping was a, a prequel has bangers like rats. It does. Amazing tune. Yeah. Amazing tune. Right. Yeah. The rest of the album, eh, there's yeah. some highlights, but for the most part, pretty boring. And then, you know, you hear these, you hear Hunter's moon atrocious you're calling me a little sunshine atrocious <laughs> and you know what feel you feel bad when he, when four is like uh yes uh the the call me a little sunshine is the heavy song on the record <laughs> like it's like dude are you shitting me this is the heavy song <laughs> and like uh, well like i know ghost lyrics have never oh. been amazing but like how did we get from like you know prime mover to vaguely <laughs> talking about like names for satan <laughs> like what the heck dude it just feels lazy no, it's it's so lazy it i don't know he doesn't he's just making so much money he doesn't need to care dude he doesn't care i was working the other day and i saw two ghost shirts in one shift that's ridiculous and You're i done. said nice shirt it's to up. the first uh, one it was like a teenage kid and he was like dude dude are you seeing them in worcester next month and i was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I didn't have the heart to say no. Oh, he's gonna. You're gonna. He's gonna experience Volbeat without you, Sam. Bro. <laughs> yeah, no. New Ghost song's gonna be ass. I yeah, think it's, it's called Impera. Suck. Impera, yeah. I mean, like we're not. We're no longer the target audience. It's fine. Ghost served a purpose. Those first three albums are goddamn rock solid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and by first three, I mean Opus and Meliora and Infestosum has like three good songs. Yeah, it's got some bangers. Um. Yeah, no, that's that's all. That's that's all right. That's a small prediction. If you have any small predictions, you can get it out of the way. Well, I have a, I have a, I have a really any, obvious prediction. Any cold takes? All right, we'll uh, make this, this is a very cold take that uh, COVID and its new variants will continue to affect the music industry in horrific ways. No. Canceling tours, killing musicians. Uh, you don't you know, think dis- breaking bands apart? You know. Hey, you know what? That's probably a decent observation and prediction um yeah yeah. i mean that's i don't know i think i have tickets to four concerts in february and three of them (laughs) have been moved yeah it's uh it's it's rough um we're hoping with all our heart that it doesn't get any worse hopefully super immunity is a thing and yeah yeah i mean unfortunately i think the only thing that would really help this is like national vaccine mandates but who's calling for that not us not us not I us <laughs> not yeah. us i mean as long as basically God. a third of the country is just you know a petri dish for covid to multiply <laughs> and one party is so vehemently or so vehement in providing constant disinformation at every turn against every possible policy measure 
there's just no way like we're in we're in COVID nope. hell for at least like 10 years at this oh point. yeah dude oh yeah i'm kind of amazed i haven't gotten it yet all things considered i mean i've never tested positive myself um so yeah no i i me too i who knows it's uh, it's a wild wild world we're getting into yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there'll be plenty of cancellations. Maybe the Deftones Gajira tour will get postponed another <laughs> Stop. Bro. I will never see Amazonia and Digital Bath in the same day. What the <gasps> fuck? See, like, at this point, it's like, do I even want to go to that show? Like, Deftones are <laughs> awesome, but I know they suck live. And, like, Gojira will play Fortitude <laughs> in its entirety. And then mag- half of Magma. So, like, yeah. do I really want to see that? <laughs> I don't know. No, I the don't Knock know. Loose tour on the other. <laughs> Whoa. That's that that yeah. lineup's sick. I don't even care if movements is opening. <laughs> no, it is sick. Um no, there's yeah. a bunch of sick tour announcements actually. Yeah, like it's it really is like these promoters were just like, Man, we gotta we gotta draw people back in and then just start booking the sickest lineups. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean up big ups to them. Yeah, big ups. But uh, we'll see how how effective those are come the actual performance time. We'll see. Adam, what what predictions do you have? Um. Well, I guess another prediction that I could have. Um, I hope to see some more in the in the same vein. I hope to see some more uh, left leaning extreme and heavy music that is overt in its uh in its approach because you know what i think people like i don't know victory over the sun uh even liturgy like very good for the community and make great music yeah or like uh you know alos for mass yeah, Spectral Lore ALOS. And stress. yep yeah no i mean it's important especially with like the more you learn about black metal the more you realize that like one like probably one in every four artists are like nazi or nazi related right like, <laughs> right you know as a community we really have to do better we really have to push back against that and mm. yeah no, i know i i totally agree and i don't know i think i think that more are going to come out of the word work as people get more i guess comfortable with uh releasing that sort of stuff mm-hmm. um no i totally yeah. agree and like i mean if you look at like the metalcore and hardcore scene like everyone is at least like on the surface uh, it supports like basically all progressive social movements like yeah. pretty explicitly yeah which is awesome yeah I, I, i'd say so yeah i'd say metal and heavy music communities in general are some of the more supportive uh okay. and communal but that's for another day but yeah no i i i, I i'm predicting that there will be um some more representative music uh coming out i mean i've even seen like the rise of like uh, south american black metal is exploding right now you know there's mm. artists from everywhere that are doing that and i don't know i think it's really cool and yeah, they provide great. a really interesting sound that i'm excited to listen to yeah i mean globalization is good for stuff like this yeah um yeah that, that that's my prediction that's my that's another prediction that's i have <laughs> I've, uh, I, i'd say yeah. i have like three left all right so fair i enough. can just i can just rattle them off sure. first of which is you know i think deathcore is at this point basically everyone kind of recognizes yeah. it as like a pretty legit genre and i think the yeah. elitism elitism surrounding deathcore is just will uh, mm-hmm. basically like, totally evaporate no I, I i think that's pretty i think that's pretty right i mean hasn't uh metalum accepted deathcore now for the most part as a genre i think it's uh it's like on a case-by-case basis yeah to be wrong because i feel like they do have the deathcore no all right die Out is murder deathcore bam okay metal, yeah, no, I mean, metal. look so there you go like i mean you can you can be anal about genre tags or whatever but deathcore has always been kind of closer to metal than punk like i understand yeah. why people say it's punk but like i mean i've been listening to the new or to the lifeblood record from last year yeah bit. you know i mean like most deathcore it's heavy as balls it's super technical you know you can hear influences from basically all across the sea um and it's you know it's finally sort of seen as like a really viable like artistic path for a lot of bands right like, you have bands like lorna shore who have blown up or like slaughter prevail or spirit box who are doing like pretty explicit takes on deathcore and just garnering widespread critical acclaim and commercial success 
Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that at this point, Deathcore has just kind of, I mean, it's planted at its feet. It's a genre. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, and you know, I'll, I'll even, you'll even see like Brooklyn metalheads like recognize it as like a really legitimate thing. Yeah, I mean, and so it's it's time. It's, it's only about time that you know more stuff you know like that becomes that. I mean, I think black post black metal and black gaze is slowly seeping its way into that too. Um, same vein. Um, mm-hmm. I think that one's probably gotten a little bit more love. Oh yeah, uh, well, from I the mean, indie community, but it's yeah. kind. Of, I mean, the the Death Heaven backlash was always more about aesthetics than anything else. Oh, yeah. It was because Pitchfork explicitly was the one pushing them, and it was a bunch of dudes that looked like they were playing in the Mountain yeah. Goats, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, my second prediction, and this is probably the. I think this is the only one that will honestly like. Uh, that's like fifty fifty will come true. But yeah. I want to see a goddamn Zoomer metal band, dude. Please, come on. Like, look. I think I don't know if I mentioned this explicitly on the podcast before, but like basically, all like popular genres have like this burst of energy and creativity from young people, people younger than us that are making music that's like very, you know, it's very post ironic, it's very hyper modern. Like hardcore has a band mm-hmm. like Turnstile. I know they're not actually like quite zoomers, but you know, it, it sort of recognizes the irony and the tropes and moves past it. Mm-hmm. Band like Hundred Gex is like the most zoomer shit ever. Oh yeah, uh, you know rap you could you can go so many rap artists like i think like bby goyard is like <laughs> the <most laughs> super shit ever yeah. or like like i want to see that in metal and i mean you could make the case for something like old nick but those guys are all like in their 30s no yeah i think it is it's it's really kind of tricky i feel like they're i feel like the the closest thing that i can really think of would be something like I don't know gulch but even then like they're they're just young they're just a young hardcore band. yeah and they're hardcore <laughs> like they're not a metal I, band yeah well i mean it's a it's a few reasons right it's because metal is more so than probably any other genre is very steeped in tradition and yeah. what makes metal interesting is when its tradition matches with ingenuity right right but you can only go so far away from metal before it's you know it stops having that core like extreme sound right and then yeah. you get something like i don't know like have a nice life which is definitely influenced by metal and hardcore but definitely yeah. not that right um and at the same time metal is historically way 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 too self-serious oh certainly like i think of all the uh you know the young kids and young bands in like the um sort of the scene that i'm in that i know and i talk to regularly and like sure they're they're kids like younger than me or my age or whatever zoomers making metal but it's just metal you know right, <laughs> they're just yeah. playing very straightforward yeah. either like you know crossover thrash or uh death metal or mm-hmm. uh, you know death hardcore you know like yeah. it's just to the t right no i i do think that there kind of needs to be I, I i think that makes sense um i feel like the easiest way for that to break in is probably prog that's the only way i can think of because like well think about it it's like and when i think zoomer metal like i know, I want you, I know what you mean cr- well, I want to be quintessentially, like, post-ironic, right? Right. Yeah. Made yeah, by yeah. kids that are young, right? Yeah. From the, you know, the younger generation. And, like, may- how old, like, maybe you could make the argument for Esoka Tra- Trahilium. Maybe. But who knows how old, uh... French dude is? French, French person is. Yeah. I mean, sadness guy is pretty young, but well, I, mean, that, I was sadness... gonna, I was gonna mention, I was gonna mention sadness, and I, I feel like there are a lot of like one man, like depresso, sesto, like uh, shoegaze, slowcore, drone. That, I feel like that is an, an aesthetic, and people are doing that. Mm-hmm. You know? No, um, I agree, I agree, but think about it is like, like I love sadness, and I think right. you could make an argument for that, but like it's also the most self serious yeah. music ever. Right. Like it's the band is called Sadness. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> even like are... you could even go with like Sonos Tomam Conta, who had the you know that black uh, black gaze record that's like mm-hmm. uh, all neon and wonderful. Yeah. Um, but it's super. Well, I mean, depressing. look, there's a lot of boundary pushing metal from yeah. people that are like relatively young. But I want I want like quintessentially yeah. Zoomer metal. All right. Well, someone, you're looking for your you're looking for your 2022 Limp Biscuit here, which I understand. <laughs> I I understand. Oh. I get it. And you know what? You're right. There does need to be like someone who is representative of, unfortunately, the TikTok generation who can really push the boundary in metal. 
Yeah, no, I agree. Like, I don't care. If, I, I don't know. I don't care if it is. Like, who's the who's the youngest popular metal band we have? Slipknot. Well, I don't know about that. Probably Code Orange. Oh, I guess Code Orange. Okay, Code Orange is one of those bands where, like, every time I mention that, I just think it's 2016 and <laughs> Forever came out, and I'm like, or they're, Forever's they're about so to come tiny. out. Like, they're so tiny. I've yeah, it's like, oh yeah, those guys. They're like, they're like 20 or whatever. Yeah, no, I, I'm good for them that they're in relapse now. Yeah, they've really been doing well in the hardcore scene. <laughs> and then, like, you check your watch and you realize they're like, you know. opening for Metallica. <laughs> yeah, touring like, stadiums. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. I guess it is Code Orange. Okay, yeah. actually, Code Orange is kind of zoomery. Like big zoomer energy, but it's also really self serious. Well, it's really self serious, and like they're all they're. I mean, they're all kind of ve- they're all veterans, right? Or like yeah, they, they've been they playing are, they for form, a while. They've yeah, they they formed when uh when Jamie and Raven were literally fifteen. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, Court Orange. Uh, I mean, Loath, I guess, kind of too. They were a very young band, but even then, they're not really. Uh, they're not what we're looking for. Yeah, I don't know. I, I want. I want some. I want some we need, fucking we some need, memory. We need our eighteen-year-old post post jazz fusion tech death band. Yeah, no. I, I want. I want to hear my like my kraut black metal with like MLG quotes <laughs> for uh, breakdowns. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know. It, the music landscape is a vast and wild place. Who knows what'll happen, dude? Yeah, seriously. I mean, we're gonna, the three people I watch it. One of them's gonna be like, "Oh, dude, you haven't heard of this artist from uh, Taiwan?" <laughs> seriously, I'll be like, "Fuck! How, how could I miss? How could yeah, I miss this?" Honestly, how could we not see this? Yeah, no. Um, um my yeah. last prediction. All right. <laughs> which is a, uh, this is this isn't a prediction as much as it is just a truth that all, all right. metalheads sort of have to come to deal with, is that uh the heat death of metal as a genre is like slowly approaching. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think there's really anything we can do to stop it. Yep. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that's fair. I feel like there's, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces, but the, I mean, the world we're creating, at least in this country and in many around the world, uh, I don't know. A touring landscape is really difficult. Uh, especially consistently, and unless people well, also just like major label promotions, hard, well, just well, hard right. dead. It's like kind of impossible for bands to just blow up the way they used to. And if you're making extreme metal, fuck if you'll ever <laughs> you're you know fucked. right do anything. So it's yeah, I, I don't know. Like especially like I don't know. Like the only reason you know a band like Leviathan makes money is because of merch, uh, you know, and you know album sales online. But like. I don't. I, there's going to be a time when that's going to be clogged. You know, there's going to be. T- I think who knows, Sam. There might be a time when Bandcamp is clogged with like Metallica and Lana Del Rey, oh, and gosh. like like all the all the all the label stuff that is you know not on Spotify, that you know has to move to an independent platform because who knows, Spotify shit the bed for the millionth time and people are finally fed up. I, mean, I don't radio heads on fan camp. <laughs> no, right? Like I, I don't know. Like I, I know I, what you I mean. mean. Not even so much in like the broad music landscape sense, because you know, music until until civilization ends, music will be popular with basically everybody yeah. for a number of reasons. I just like metal specifically. I just think it's you know it has a shorter lifespan for a number of reasons. Like it's a genre fundamentally rooted in the past, created and perpetuated by like you know upper middle class white guys that's not necessarily a bad thing it's just something to recognize um it's very like metal is very much like you know people talk about how rock is dead all the time right and you know the response to that is of course it's not dead there's so like it's maybe dead is like the most popular like form but there's so many amazing things that don't rock all the time but metal is a subgenre of rock with a very specific set of like parameters and you know it's in order for like a young young person to really get into metal they have to you know fall under a very specific set of parameters to get really into it and with the death of radio with the touring being down with you know all these big bands like not mattering as much anymore it's just i don't see it happening like why the hell would you learn to pick up a guitar why would you pick up a guitar and spend 10 years so being able to play yeah. metal, like you know, I've been playing guitar for what eleven years at this point, and only in the past couple have I been able to play like the really like complex like death metal stuff. 
right? Like, yeah. why would you spend 10 years learning drums? Why would you spend two years learning how to death growl when there's no money in it, no one listens to it, and the, all the biggest names, aside from a few, um, you know, kind of are st- they're not too big to fail. Like this no, is something I, I I spoke about with my uh with a uh, Ian Cheney of uh, in our conversations. He was always like, yeah, there's like what metal bands are too big to fail? You have Metallica, and that's literally it. Like if Judas fucking Priest releases a bad album, they're gone. If Iron Maiden, you know, really shit the bed, they're kind of on the fence. But literally any other band, yeah, cooked. You They're can't. just cooked. Like, even a band like, you know, Mastodon, right? We think it like, I think, oh, Mastodon fucking ginormous, right? Even then, they like, you know, they're cooked. Or like, yeah. I think of how, you know, when I saw Opeth in Mastodon, it wasn't a sold out show. It was like half full. Or I think of like how if you look at like a band like Cradle of Filth's touring data, you can see that all, they're playing all these huge venues and selling like 200 tickets. Like yeah. all these giant bands that we think of as like fundamental to like popular metal just don't matter anymore for a number of reasons. It's really only old people listening to metal. Yeah. And old people aren't going to shows. No, and old people aren't picking up instruments and no. being like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to make a technical thrash band. <laughs> no. No, it's really tough. And it's it, 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 maybe it's discouraging to watch the world fall around or fall down around you. Um, but I don't know. I mean, like, there has to be others that are, you know, in the similar position. I mean, we do know people in young metal bands. There are people no, like, that do want to continue and I don't, the tradition. Like, metal, but... because it was popular at one point, will never cease to exist, you know? Yeah. It's, I mean, metal's already sort of gone the route of jazz, where it was popular for a time, and now it's more of like a collector thing yeah. for certain people, right? And that's fine, you know? That happens to a lot of genres, not just jazz or metal. Yeah. But, I, you know, and people always make it in the underground, but, like, the age of, like, even touring bands is coming to a close Oh, absolutely. And, like, also, why the... F- <laughs> like, you know, let's say, you know, we graduate college or whatever this year and then start working 40 hours a week at, like, an IT firm, right? Sure. Uh, so, you, right? Well, <laughs> in what time are you going to, pra- you know, get get a band together, practice, find time to play live, find time to record a record around four, like, full-time work schedules? And that's not including, like, oh, I don't know, you know, finding a partner. That's not including, like other interests that's not including vacation like it's just so it's hard it's a lot yeah no i mean it is certainly a commitment and i don't know becoming a one-man bedroom sensation is not hard anymore it's all about getting lucky and knowing the right people yeah no, uh, totally. which is certainly what it's always been but to a degree i mean there's there is kind of such a low barrier to entry into music right now why bother challenging yourself you know Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, media like... gatekeepers just don't exist anymore. Right. Yeah, like if you look at you know I, I do I I, I try really my best to stay up to date with like pop news and like trends and whatnot. And if you look at like any popular song in the past like year or two years, it's it, chances are it's like some random indie artist on TikTok that just happened to have a, a bite go viral. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly it. I mean, the only reason Lil Huddy exists is. Because, you know, he got viral. No, totally. Or, like, if I read a Sterigam article a few days ago about, like, a, a new up-and-coming, like, a younger, uh, young a teenage girl who's, like, making, you know, like, Billie Eilish <laughs> core. Core, <right? laughs> yeah. And, you know, how'd she get big? TikTok. How'd Gail TikTok. get big? That's the one that did A, B, C, D, E, F, U. Yeah. Horrible song, by the way. TikTok. Yeah. How'd, uh, you know, how Little Nas X get big? TikTok. Mm-hmm. How'd Olivia Rodrigo get big? TikTok. How'd Joe Jacob get big? TikTok. You know? There's obviously major labels and, you know, market hegemonies are useful in crafting, like, big artists and big media narratives. But as far as, like, you know, organic blowing up, that it's just – it's not the same as it was and it never nope. will be. Absolutely not. I mean, I guess it is good that we can, you know, come to realize that and put it into practice now. Spread the word. Tell our fellow metalheads, unite. We must be strong together brothers um but no i mean it's it's somewhat discouraging that like i guess the rocker's dream especially in the heavy music world where like you know like i don't know you care 
a little bit more about I don't know. I feel like there's a bit more effort and passion put into much of the heavy music community than there is, I guess, uh, not necessarily the popular community. I don't know. But either well, way, on a, on, a, on a sheer like utilitarian basis, sure. it just takes more time to make to make a metal record me- metal than most other things. Yeah. And that's not like being elitist. Like, no, I, w- I wouldn't say so. And it, it, that's exactly it. Like, you know, it is somewhat discouraging for the people who are willing to put in the effort. Um, but I guess we just need to come to the realization that people are going to stop putting in the effort. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know, like I said, metal always exists in some form or another in the underground. It's just the days of touring bands, the days of mainstream popularity yeah. are rapidly dwindling. Mm-hmm. Especially, I don't know, especially in America. Oh, yeah. Like, especially I don't, you know, America. like, places like, you know, Belgium and... Denmark are already opening their doors and, you know, having prosperous, you know, touring cycles and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, those so. those, those places also have, you know, considerable uh, well, yeah. safety nets that make it easier for you to be a full-time Ab- musician. Absolutely. There. You know, in America, we just kind of, like, let's say tomorrow, I'm like, all right, drop out of school, full-time metal musician, right? Uh, like, <laughs> I'd, I'd have to live with my parents. I'd have to work a part-time job to like pay bills and whatnot. And if I was incredibly lucky, I'd be able to make less than, you know, a teacher <laughs> salary, like minimum right? wage, basically. Yeah. By grinding my ass off. Mm-hmm. Like it's just not feasible, unfortunately. Nope. Yeah, I mean the time the time to do that was, I guess I don't know the nineties, the eighties. Yeah, the time to do that was mid '80s to late '90s. Yeah, there's no money in the music industry, and there's and if there's no money in the music industry, there's really no money (laughs) in metal. No, seriously. uh, Yeah, Yeah. no. I don't know. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Exactly. Nothing you really can do. But no, I mean, I don't know. I'll I'll support the artists I like. I'll listen to the endless amount of great heavy music that comes out. Sam, I think NFTs are the answer because each you know artist you're, no, is going right. to control their own. <laughs> dude, you're right. Decentralized on the blockchain. You know, yeah. I didn't even consider that, dude. No, Genius. I, I think that's the next step. Oh my god! Can we just can we just please just ban cryptocurrency and ban <laughs> NFTs? Like, my I, god! Please, it's just, nut. Do use that executive power for good. My god, it's just ridiculous. But hey, that, that's a whole other conversation. Did we talk about that? How the uh, Zach from Imperial Triumphant was like, I've made more money off NFTs than I have <laughs> off of Imperial Triumphant in 15 years. No, no, we haven't talked about that. Here. Well, he, that was a news. Oh that God. was a headline from like a month ago, which is yeah. hysterical. And you know what? I believe it, which is the wrong, which is the worst thing. Yeah, I mean, we're not gonna get gonna get into the full Dan Olson rabbit hole here, but you know. Gosh, what a what a horrific concept! A horrific <laughs> yeah. implementation. Seriously, it really is just a pyramid scheme for crypto bros or for people that already have considerable wealth. Yep. Yep. Huh. Speaking of pyramid schemes, uh, dude, Chris Barnes is an idiot. Yes. Yeah, I'm. <sighs> you can't like make this up. This stuff no. up. No. Um. I saw. I saw this tweet. And I had to, I had to, I had to do a little bit of digging, um, but it makes total sense. Like the vocalist for the worst death metal band that I've never heard of, except for one album when it came out. I was like, this is the worst music I've ever heard in my life. Ex Cannibal Corpse hates everyone else in death metal because they yeah, suck. Yeah, like and then what? He, dude, he like lost it on Twitter the other day. He was like, <laughs> no, I, I just I smoked uh, spice and took laxatives and I slept for twenty four hours or something. <laughs> like I mean, clearly, clearly this man has just done too many drugs in his oh. life. Like he's like he's, this guy's in his like mid fifties with full mm-hmm. dreadlocks and he's like incredibly <laughs> white. Like he's always been sort of known as just an asshole, but I mean, this isn't surprising. <laughs> yeah, it is, no. it is some it is some content though. Yeah, no, it's just. It, it, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, I don't know, man. Like, are you really, are you really telling me that there, that there's no, there's no death metal since six feet under? Like, re- really, really? Dude, just like, I mean, <laughs> it's hysterical. Like, like, I don't know what you're trying to prove. Like, it's just, it's just, it's so ridiculous that I don't know if this publicity stunt is it just like I, dude, I just think he's kind of an idiot and like he got really high and was like. Argh. 
and like mouth breathed his way into some hot takes on Twitter. Like, are you really are you really gonna fight J- Jamie Jast on Twitter? See, like, really, Chris Barnes? Really? It's just stupid. It's dumb. Oh, are yeah, we speaking of stupid, dude? Shout out to David Germain, <laughs> legend, <laughs> applauding Spotify for removing Neil Young's music and protecting free speech. My God. Uh, it gets I mean, worse if it went, every if it, day. If, like if it, if it wasn't <laughs> clear by uh, many of our comments, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely both left leaning in, in many ways. Uh, and I under I I support I support free speech, but you know, the, there's no one that truly believes in free speech absolutism. Like absolutism, virtually nobody actually believes in that for a number of reasons. And for everyone, there's a gradient, and everyone's gonna have their own gradient, right? Personally, my gradient is when mass media information becomes incredibly harmful to entire populaces of people right that's why nazis explicit (laughs) hate speech are generally banned on most platforms that's why vaccine disinformation is banned on most platforms joe Uh, rogan is the single most popular media figure in the world and every single week he falls further and further down to you know some crackpot reactionary boomer rabbit hole and he has been so explicitly anti-covid vaccine since day one for essentially no reason other than that he's very dumb and he picked this position and is sticking (laughs) by it yeah and this guy is literally the biggest media platform in the world no it's 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 ridiculous how successful he's become millions upon millions of people listen to this guy every single week and he's convinced so many individuals to just believe in the worst of right-wing talking points especially around covid vaccine information like imagine how many how many people Joe Rogan has killed like yeah. because of this yeah seriously I like mean, we're almost at a million COVID deaths in America we have 5,000 COVID deaths due to Omicron a day right now and Joe, <sighs> Joe Rogan is just sitting on his fucking high horse making you know 50, 100 million dollars a year or whatever to just spout right wing drivel with no basis in reality yep and look, I liked Rogan for a while. He was just like kind of a cool dude bro interviewer who, and the, what made him good is he was a chameleon. So he'd just be a, you know, really solid interviewer who matter, no matter who it was on. But, you know, in the past year and a half, it's like you bite one anti-COVID bill and you just spiral the fuck down. Yep. And it is hysterical that David Dremaine of all people is applauding <laughs> Spotify for moving Neil Young's music and to protect free speech. Like, dude, this is David. I am it. An open Zionist Jermaine. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Yeah, man. It just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. And the fact that like, and there's more people than just David Jermaine that are you know supporting this. Um, but it's I don't know. He's just one example. It's just a lack of a, a complete lack of understanding. I mean, no, totally. Like, and like, I mean, I, I, I've just, I, I spend so much time in political discourse circles and in class or whatever, just you know, hashing this out. But like, there is something called the social contract. There is, it is the understanding that if, if, if you do something which has the potential to actively harm other people, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Now, with the vaccines. <laughs> Most of the time, it is a free choice, right? But with COVID explicitly, if you're not vaccinated, not only can you get and transmit COVID to anybody else, and you're far more you know, transmissive than you than if you were, but you can also have COVID mutate within you and make the virus worse. And, you know, it is, it is amazing the amount of brain rot that people have about this. It's like you can only chalk it up to, you know, decades of conservative framing. Seriously, I mean, that, that is what it comes down to because – it's pretty simple. I mean, I don't know. Vaccine science has been what completed since the sixties, fifties. Like they've been vaccines have been around for decades. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's no it's different. Just, it's, it's no different. And like, there's, I mean, look, people do not care about facts. The, no. If if there's anything you can say about modern American politics is that every single issue has become a culture war issue above all else. And yep. that's why, you know, we have certain successful Republicans with virtually no policy stances. That's why we have most liberals with virtually no policy stances. It's because all these fucking hogs care about is winning. And in order to do that, they just focus on shit like trans bathrooms or a uh, vaccine mandate. And the difference between like something like, you know, uh, trans rights, which is you know obviously something you should protect, which conservatives oppose, is that the vaccine of opposition is 
like explicitly horrible for the entire country. Yep. Like, sure. I mean, I, I really, you know, I, I, I really wish a conservative supported social programs in like Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. But when they don't support that, it doesn't harm virtually everybody else. No. When they, <laughs> when no. they t- like. Uh, it's just it's so horrible it's like these fucking mouth breathers it's everywhere like i'll go on instagram and i'll see like karina cop being like i i, I don't support vaccine mandates because uh free speech free choice <laughs> and it's i don't know there's no fucking argument against it no and what's what's horrible is as soon as you bite one of these as soon as you bite the anti-vax pill you just spiral the fuck down like it does not matter what you hold what beliefs you hold you could be like the like a super moderate like lib or whatever and then you just like you know what? i'm anti-vax then suddenly you start being like you know i just think wait the a minute Jews i'm a... oppressed <laughs> i'm the oppressed one I'm here the <laughs> oppressed one here like that's all it takes like a good example would be like anna and dasha from red scare they went from being like you know just edgy leftist contrarians to total like oan spokespeople in about a year after they came <laughs> for anti-vax or same thing with joe rogan like uh, virtually every issue nowadays, he'll be like, "Oh, dumb right wing talking point," <laughs> and it all. I don't know. Uh, clearly, clearly, this is a fun topic, but I mean, we're I, so, uh, it's it it. I mean, it's important because we have people like David Germain who continue to aid in this. You know, very not good shit at all. Like. This is just bad. This is actively It's just, it's just bad. universally bad. And it sucks that so many fucking, you know, uh, the, the biggest, spoiler, the biggest uh, percentage of conservatives in America are older conservative, or older white men, right? And uh, that's most of metal fans. Yeah. <laughs> so it sucks that, you know, our genre is so infested with, you know, fucking mouth breathers like this. Yep. It, it, it's a shame. That's why we need Zoomer metal. That's Boy. why we need Zoomer metal. I don't, I don't care if Zoomer Metals believe in, like, cringy shit, like, full revolutionary takeover or support, like, I don't know, the USSR Dude, or something. Just be a furry, okay? Just do it. Just put it on, make a death metal album, and play as a furry. Come on. Yeah, you're right. I'm, wait- I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm Sonic Fox of death metal. Honestly, where, where is <sighs> the Sonic All right. group of uh, metal? I got, I got some, some great news, dude. All do right. you know Ghost's new album has a song aimed at Bible Thumpers? Wow, I would never gather that. Bro, uh, Forge in an interview in reference to Mike Pence said, it's about people like him, a lot of politicians, a lot of preachers, a lot of clergymen. Wow. Thank you, Tobias Forge. Dude, for what, would we, what would we do without a social figure? Oh my God. A modern day Christ, if you will. The I pariah mean, himself. Pop- Papa Emeritus. <sighs> Cardinal Copia. I, I, I mean, I hope, I, I hope, I hope the, the reason this is funny is, <laughs> is evident to everyone listening. <laughs> I really hope I don't have to explain this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, other than that, it's just like plenty of like dumb, not dumb, but sh- tour news and album news. Yeah, pretty much. Here I come. I mean, yeah. like I mentioned, excited as hell for that Sugar record. Yeah, no, the Sugar record is gonna be. Uh, very fun to listen to. Here, let me go. Th- let me go through my list. Um, hmm. But yeah, we got. Uh, well, I guess when when's this gonna come out? This is gonna come out. We have. Um, I mean, next couple of weeks we have Zeal and Ardor, Cult of Luna. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, Author and Punisher too. Yeah, o- yeah. On that day. And that, uh, that that Zeal and Ardor is like gonna blow the heck up. No, absolutely. It's getting yep. like the perfect media push and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, and then they keep they keep putting out singles too, like every two weeks or a month or whatever. So there's like six mm-hmm. singles out already. So like they're it's blown up. It's gonna blow up. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe yeah, that'll maybe about. that'll be all blows up. Maybe maybe it'll be Zeal and Ardor. I wouldn't Zeal I wouldn't Ardor doubt are it. Quite popular, all things considered. Well, yeah, but I mean, um, I would, yeah. I could totally see that. We also have Rolla Tomasi and Black Country New Road come out next week. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and New Think Persephone, that. Sam. <laughs> are you gonna I, <laughs> that's it uh i'm yeah i mean i the, the yep. new cloakroom came out uh when yep. the day we're recording this it's quite good yeah um let's see let's see let's see uh ch- 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 yeah i don't know there's uh oh um dadorn got remixed and remastered 
They the re-released Dwayne? it. The the Amon Ra album. Oh, it got, oh, it got, oh. They, they re they re-released it. Why? Rem- the remixed. Um, it's but, but, they, but they why? made they made well. Uh, appa- I don't know why, but they made. Oh shit! Meshuggah dropped a single. They yeah the, yeah the first single came out today. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, the vocals are louder, and the um, like symphonics are louder. I think the mix it, the mix, mix is a lot more centralized on the alternate mix. I actually think it sounds better than the original. And I'm, I, I'm sure it sounds better. That's, that's I, interesting that they'd uh, release yeah, that, uh, Relapse yeah. so close. Well, no, it's Relapse, too. Relapse put it out. Um, so, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. wow. I don't know. I don't know. Well, they, yeah, they weren't really listening. But, yeah. No, um, that came out. And Ooh. let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? Yeah, no. Um, yeah. What is that? What is that? What's RYM like this year so far? So far, um, right now, well, Wilderun held the top metal spot for a while. Um, we as do took it. Cult of Luna has it now, but that album hasn't even come out yet. I'm surprised the Earl's Earl's so high. Um, the Foxtails album is currently at number six. I should probably listen to that. <laughs> it's pretty good. I listen. I listen to it a couple of times. Um, yeah, We as Dude is at number eleven. Fit for, an, for auto- an autopsy dropped a record. <laughs> yeah, I guess the weekend dropped a record. Yep, he did too. Um, and then yeah, it's just kind of yeah random. Yeah, about what you'd expect. About what you'd expect. I've listened to a couple of the records though. Like that Tundra record's actually pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm like I'm I'm sure most of this is good. It's like there's just only so much you can digest. <laughs> Seriously, so many hours well, in a day. <laughs> any anything uh, any other uh, fun little bits you want to bring up, Adam? Um, I don't know. Get the everyone be safe. It's winter. The winter's weird. If you're where we are, be safe. Um, I guess uh, the the crazy world is happening. Crazy weather. Uh, I don't know. Live, laugh, love. Listen to metal. Fuck. I don't know. Live, laugh, love. Amen. <laughs> what, would do, what would you do without such tried and true, honestly, timeless advice? Um. Yeah, I don't know. Listen to the new Kralis album and the new Dissolution Wave album and uh, some other stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I know. New Cloakroom's really good. New Cloakroom? Yeah. Today. Yeah, darn right. right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's not fun. Maybe maybe we'll drop the next podcast sooner than a month. Hey, maybe. Now. We'll, we'll have to see. We're, we're, we are back to school, so our schedule is nice and uh, organized. So, yeah, we, we, indeed, we are indeed the leaders. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Uh, yeah, all right. I've been Sam. I'm Adam. And this has been the PML Guide Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Have, 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 bye-bye. Yeah. Bye.